Hey fur friends, do you have a dog that eats their food way too fast and you want to find a solution to help slow them down when they're eating their food? Well, then this is the perfect video for you because in today's video I'm going to be talking about all things slow feeder bowls and telling you everything you need to know about them and doing a live demo testing it out with my dog Fred to see if it actually slows them down. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then keep watching. Okay, so starting off with what is a slow feeder bowl? So it's essentially exactly what it sounds like. It is a bowl that helps to slow down the pace that your dog or cat are consuming their food. How it works is you can put kibble, raw food, canned food, you can mix um, like fresh food in here as well with your kibble or raw food and basically you can put it all in the different edges. I'll show um, when we get to the demo part, I'll show you what mine looks like when I give it to my dog Fred, but it um, just makes it a lot more difficult for your dog to get at the food instead of just putting a bowl down and then gobbling the food up and you turn around within one second and it's gone this really just helps to slow them down and they have to work for their food and here is one for example that we actually got from HomeSense, I think. I actually did go into a few pet stores to see what selection they had of different slow feeder bowls. So I'll put some clips in here and you're gonna actually see that they come in a variety of colors, sizes, and different um, designs as well. Um, and there's a few different brands that offer them. I'll also put some clips that I found of some really cool ones on Amazon. I will leave links down below also if you're interested in checking any of those out as well. But it is nice that they do come in a variety of sizes depending on the weight of your dog and also how much food your dog eats. So for example, this one that I got, which is here's what it looks like, um, it holds up to four cups of food, which is great because I can use it for my big dog and my smaller dog. So the cost of these range depending on the size that you're getting from about $10 to like $30, $35. This one that I got that actually came in this box was only $9.99, which is a really good price for a slow feeder bowl. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through some of the pros of using a slow feeder bowl. So if your dog is just eating out of a regular um, bowl and they consume their food very quickly like my dog does, there can be a few side effects that can be dangerous for your dog, such as um, choking, vomiting, bloating, gagging, belching so all those things because they're consuming the food so quickly they're not they're not allowing their body to actually digest any of the food they're not chewing the food so all around it is not good for your dog to be eating their food very quickly it's just like with humans you know people will say slow down chew your food ingest your food because then also too you're going to feel full longer so just the same with dogs you want to make sure that um, you can extend the period that your dog is eating for as long as possible and this is a great tool to use to do that another, another huge pro in using a slow feeder bowl is that it's an amazing form of enrichment for your dog so enrichment is essentially mental activity that stimulates your dog's brain which is just as important as your dog getting physical activity as it is to get mental stimulation and this is a great tool to use and you can be using this multiple times a day depending on how often you feed your dog because they are having to work to get the food out of here. So they have to take time, they have to think, and it's a challenge for them to work to get this all out. So it's a great option to use for your dog. And at the end of them eating their food, they are going to feel mentally and physically tired from working through getting their food out. So it's a great form of mental stimulation to incorporate into their day-to-day -day life. A few other pros and options that you can do to make this even more fun for your dog is you can add, along with their regular diet food, you can add, you know, frozen berries, frozen vegetables, a variety of, you know, liquids such as um, goat milk, water, um, coconut oil, different oils. You can put their supplements in this. So it gives you um, an opportunity to get creative with the food that you're giving your dog and give them a challenge at the same time. Another thing too that is a huge pro about this is if you're wanting to put your dog on a diet, a lot of people will be like, oh, I feel so bad, he's hungry, or you know, I can tell that this is not enough food, but he really needs to lose weight. This is a great option because when you give your dog one kibble, or you give your dog 10 kibbles, they can't tell the difference. They just know, oh, I'm getting fed, yay. So if you're putting in, say, half a cup in here, or a cup, 
they aren't really gonna know the difference. They're just gonna know, okay, there's food in here, I'm working to get it out. It's taking an, a period of time, so they're gonna feel mentally stimulated and tired from the food and feel full because they've taken time to digest that food. So it is a great tool to use, and especially too if you're breaking up their food and they're getting fed a few times a day, then they're gonna notice it even less because like I said, they're gonna be taking time throughout the day when they're using these bowls to work to get that food. So it is a great tool to use when you are wanting to put your dog on a diet. Okay, so now moving on to a few cons that I thought of with using a slow feeder bowl. And we'll start off with the first one is that it is plastic. And it is it is dishwasher safe, which is great, but you wanna make sure that after each use, you are cleaning this thoroughly, especially with raw food, because with all these edges, it's really easy for food to get stuck and trapped in there and bacteria can grow if you're not cleaning it out really well. So a big one is make sure you are cleaning this after each use. Another one is if you have um, a dog that really loves chewing um, with all these plastic edges, if they get bored and you leave it out and food was on it, they could end up chewing on this or they could end up chewing on, you know, tipping it over and chewing the bottom. So you just wanna make sure once you've, um, once they've finished eating that you take it away from them and clean it and then they can have it the next time, but it's not something that just stays on the floor. Um, another one that I thought of, which won't apply to all dogs and is really only if you have more than one dog, is if you put two feeder bowls down and you have one dog that eats their food faster than the other dog and if the dog that's finished their food encroaches on the territory of the dog that's still working on finishing their food, that could cause a little aggression depending on your dog. It's not in all circumstances, but it could be a situation that arises. Um, the dog that's working on finishing their food, because they are you know, focused and mentally being so stimulated on eating their food, it could cause a little aggression towards the dog that's encroaching on their territory, which is understandable, but you wanna make sure that you're not leaving the food unattended when your dogs are eating. So you wanna make sure you're there just monitoring it. Um, I never leave my dogs unattended when I feed them, just, you know, in case something did happen, I wanna be there. Another con that I thought of as well could be that if your dog just gets frustrated enough and doesn't wanna, you know, work on getting all the food out, they could, um, if there's not um, enough grip on the bottom to for it to lay flat on the ground, they could just tip it over with their nose. They could get it up and tip it over so that all the food falls out. So that is another con. Uh, I don't think that's as likely, but if your dog does get frustrated enough, it could, it could happen. All right, so now let's jump into the clips of, I'm gonna show you the first clip of Fred eating his food out of his regular bowl and time that and see how long it takes. And then we'll do the clip of Fred eating out of this bowl and see the time difference. Okay, so here's his food just in a regular bowl and it has water in it and it's gonna have the exact same thing that I'm going to put into this. So I'm gonna grab my timer, put the food down, wait, wait, and go, go. adding in the water as well, which I always add in to Fred's food, so like that. Okay, and then we're going to put this down, sit, good boy. So this is what it looks like, and we are going to start the timer now. Okay, go, go! Wait, Fred, you got one more piece in here. 10 minutes. Wow. So you can see, like, it's all wet and slimy and really needs to be clean. But wow, 10 minutes for him to eat his food is amazing. Was that fun? Was that fun, Freddy? You like that, huh? 
Okay, I am back, and as you can see from those clips, the slow feeder bowl made a significant difference in the amount of time it took Fred to eat his food, which is absolutely amazing. I was actually shocked. I did not think that it was going to take him just over 10 minutes to eat out of this because as you can see, it took in the regular bowl, it took him one minute and 20 and he seconds. He just gobbles it down and it like you turn around and it's gone. But with this, like 10 minutes, and he was not getting frustrated, he enjoyed it. I could tell that he was stimulated as he was using it. You know, it, it did move around a little bit, which is a little bit frustrating because I need to get one that has more grip on the bottom because this one only has these little bits, so it did not stick very well on our tile floor. So that's one thing I would recommend looking out for when you are buying one of these is trying to get one that has a good um, either rubber or grip on the bottom. But overall, Fred really did enjoy it, um, and I am definitely going to use this again. I want to try out some other ones as well, so if you have any recommendations of other ones you recommend, especially for bigger dogs, please leave them below. I would love to try them out. Overall, I am very happy with this, and I'm going to incorporate this into Fred's daily food regimen and see how it goes. So thank you so much for watching, and if you have any video recommendations or any questions, please leave them down below. Like I said, I will include some links of some other ones I found online that you, if you're interested in trying them out, and please leave your feedback on them uh, below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.